I'm teasing you with another dovetail based joint that isn't actually a dovetail joint. Um, this one here is the dovetail housing joint or a stopped dovetail housing joint because you can see the dovetail on the back and you cannot see it on the front. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to cut this entirely by hand and enlighten you on the process. So let's go. So of course, starting with our two boring bits of timber, let's get these attached and getting close as well. So of course, before we go anywhere, tools to cut this joint, square, knife, chisel, trusty Jesus pen, a sliding bevel, a marking gauge, a ruler, a hammer, a rip saw, and preferably a crosscut saw and a router plane because they're gonna help you greatly. So let's get into marking it out. Okay, so marking this joint out. What we're going to do is, I think we're gonna join this sapili, mm, I'm gonna keep calling it that, into the ash like this. So we're gonna be cutting the dovetail onto the end of this, and we're gonna be cutting the housing into this and we're gonna be making it a stopped housing as well so that you will not see the joint through the front. So first thing we are going to do is we're going to get our Jesus pen and we are going to mark our face sides and face edges. So with this one, the joint is going to be assembled like this, I think. So I'm gonna do a face side on here. God, I need a new one. Okay, so face side there and on the top here, like that. So there we go, that is how the joint is going to be assembled. So I can see this face here with my face and I can see this face here with my face. I know they're going to go together like that. So next one, I think we're going to do the baseline on this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to measure the thickness of this material, which I know from previous videos to be 26. I don't know why I'm still bothering with that. And we're gonna house it in halfway on there, I reckon. So let's make this 13 mil. So obviously this is going in like that and we want to house it in 13 millimetres like that. So that means on this edge here, we are going to mark 13 millimetres all the way around with our marking gauge. So just be nice and careful with this. And it's worth saying again, the end of this needs to be perfectly square. If you haven't watched my One Minute Wednesdays video on how to get end grain square, I would very much recommend watching that because you can do it with limited tools. So there we go, that marking gauge line is all the way round. That gives us our shoulder line. And now on here, we need to obviously mark a line on here as well. So again, because it's going in 13 millimeters, and obviously here we wanna be referencing off our face side, so it means getting the marking gauge on here. Now, because this is a stopped housing joint, we don't need to mark it on the front here. We only need to do it on the back because that is where we're going to be sliding that joint in. So because it's on the back, I'm gonna make that baseline a little bit bigger. So baseline is all marked out. What we're gonna do next is the lines along the top here to cut the dovetail. So we can now change this marking gauge. We don't need that setting anymore. So it's 26. So I think we'll go in about three millimeters from each side. And then I've got a little bit of a flat surface to get my saw started on. So line across the top like that, line across this top. And we're going to get our sliding bevel and we're gonna mark the dovetails on the end of this now. Now with the ratios on these, I would make them a little bit steeper if you're one of those people who say, oh no, one in eight for hardwoods and one in six for softwoods. Something like this, you don't really wanna be doing it one in eight. I'd recommend um, increasing that pitch a little bit. So I'm gonna do this around one in six, but like I said in previous videos, I'm not going to be too fussy about this because I think the theory behind dovetail ratios is a little bit um, pointless, to be honest. And I'll be covering that in a future video in the form of a rant because it's got to the point now where it's just a little bit stupid, to be honest. So, so dovetail is marked on the edges here. So I'm not going to bother marking it on the other side as well because I'm not going to be able to see that face as I'm sawing it. So dovetail is marked on there. The next thing we're going to do is where we want that stopped groove to end. So I reckon we'll probably do it about 10 millimetres from the edge on here. So I'm gonna set this marking gauge to 10 millimeters. Now, if you watch my tool jewel video on the Veritas marking gauge versus the tight mark marking gauge, you'll know on here that I've got little graduations on here that allow me to lock the head of this at a specific dimension without having to get a ruler on here and measuring it. So it's a little convenience, obviously. So on here, quick reminder, again, we're going in like this, which means the groove is going to be in this kind of section here. And we're going to stop it around here, about 10 millimeters from the edge. So on here, because they're going together like that, that means that we're going to be cutting the dovetail all the way along here, and then we're going to be cutting this end off here, 
which is at the front to allow it to slide up flush with the front here. So let's mark that on. So that's where our groove is. We've marked 10 millimeters. So marking gauge line there, marked off our face edge on here like this. We're gonna do exactly the same on this Sapili. So mark it off the face edge on here and look, that's where our line is. Happy days. And that is actually all the marking out we can do at this point. We actually need to saw this out now. So to the vise. So the components now in the vise, it's all locked around and we're going to cut this dovetail shape out of it now. So I've got my tenon saw for this because it's got a much longer plate on it so I'm able to get better strokes on it. You probably could use a dovetail saw for this as well but it's going to be quite a bit of effort for you. If you have a fine tooth dovetail saw, so say around 20 TPI, that's probably going to clog up. You want it to be around 14 TPI for example. The 14 TPI is what the standard Veritas dovetail saw comes at. And that is the one I recommend. That's the one I've been using for the past four years. So anyway, dovetail shape, cut into it. So I'm gonna use the tips that I shared with you in my video, how to saw correctly. Link is up here for that if you haven't watched that. Nibble away until I get to that line. There we go, I'm gonna level out the saw. And then just watch out to make sure I don't hit that baseline at the bottom, obviously. So a few more strokes. Go. that's looking pretty good so now we've just got to chop off this little end here for our stopped groove so ignore that pen line on there that's just where i scribbled on it earlier i have got a little knife line for me to work to here so there we go nibble away at the back level the saw out So let's cut all those excess bits off now. So this is why I said, ideally you could have a cross cut saw for this bit because we are cutting across the grain. But if you watch my video on what saws do you need, you'll know that you can actually use a rip saw to cross cut timber. So I'll do that for you now just to prove it. So nibble away at the back. The only difference is with using a rip saw for cross cutting is that it's just not as clean. But as you can see, it still works exactly the same. There we go. All right, now let's get cleaning this up. So same as all the other joints we've done, when we are chiseling down to these shoulder lines, we're not going to be standing here and doing it because I can't see if that chisel is tilting forwards or backwards much. Whereas if I stand here with my eyesight in line with the shoulder line, I can see if that chisel is square or not and therefore give myself a nice square shoulder line. As I said before, your eye is naturally good at seeing square and if it isn't good at seeing square, you can just simply put your chisel in the knife line, slide a square up to the back of the chisel, voila, you know it is square. So in close now. So we're just gonna work our way along evenly again. So I've got a millimeter here left. So I'm gonna take off half a millimeter all the way along and then do the final chop at the shoulder line. So. Now, chisel in the final shoulder line. What I'm not going to do at this point is pop my chisel right on the edge because if I accidentally undercut this, we're gonna see a gap in the joint along here. So I'm gonna start it about three millimeters back from that front edge, and I'm just gonna chop down from there. And then when it comes to cleaning up this section, we're gonna flip this timber up on end, and then we're gonna chisel down into it from this way here. So anyway, like I say, three millimeters back from the front edge, get the chisel square. And this back edge here, I've stopped three millimetres from it. We could, in theory, come from this way, like we are with the front, but I'm not going to bother. It's the back edge. We can just chisel it down. And then looking at it from my direction, I can just follow that shoulder line down. So chisel in there, and then just small taps. There we go. So I've just followed that shoulder line down the back edge here that I can see. And let's just clear all that out there. Flip it over and do exactly the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I've gone all the way around this on both sides now. And like I say, we have stopped three millimeters from the front here. And we are going to attack that from the front face here to ensure we don't get any visible gaps. So let's clamp that in there. And firstly, we're gonna remove that one millimeter, take it down to half a millimeter from the shoulder line. Right, and now chisel in that shoulder line. And just be very careful here, because again, if you undercut it, it's gonna show a gap on this face here. I would rather have a gap on that face than on the front face, to be honest. That's why I'm doing it this way. Cool. Right, now let's get that upright and just do some final cleanup. And again, what I'm seeing here, if you watch my previous video, you'll know that I mentioned about seeing this white line around the edge. And that means that you have hit that marking gauge line spot on around the edge. If you cut any deeper than that and remove that white line, well, it means you've gone too deep. So if you see that white line, it's a good thing. 
So I'm just going to do a little bit of pairing around the edges now. Just make sure there is nothing in those corners. There you go. <laughs> Remove something there. Lovely. Now, the only thing we need to check here is if this face here is square. Now, if you have a combination square, it's going to be great for this because you can just slide it to adjust that. I don't actually have one. It does look a little bit skew with to me. It looks like I had an off day with soaring. There we go. So I'm just going to pop the chisel in there and pair it down. Again, it doesn't really matter if you undercut this one because this is never going to be seen. Just got to pop our chisel in that marking gauge line on the top there. Get it in there square. Now, this is end grain, so it is possibly going to follow the grain here. But because it's such a minimal amount, we should be okay. There you go. See how it broke off at the very end there? That's it following the end grain. A bit more clean up on this edge, I think. I might just slightly undercut it just to make sure that it doesn't stop it from bottoming out on there. But otherwise, that looks pretty good. Now that part of the joint is all done. Okay, so now we need to mark the dovetail into the edge of the timber here so we know at what angle to cut. Now the convenient part here is obviously face side here, face edge, face side here, face edge, which means they need to go together like this. And the convenient thing about this is when we're marking this dovetail, we can simply use that bit that we've cut out there to hook around the edge and then mark it out on here like that. So there we go, we're just going to clamp this in the vise like that. Now I've just got to make sure that the shoulder line on the back here is properly pressed up against it. And you know it'll be properly pressed up against the edge on the shoulders here because the end grain on this timber will line straight up with the marking gauge line we put in the edge of the ash here. So that looks pretty good. Ah, oh, curses of being left-handed. I'm gonna to have to sort of like reach over this one with my arm, but light mark to start with, very light mark with the knife line. On that side and then on this side. Oh, I've got a shake in my arm, look. <laughs> there we go. So that dovetail is marked in there now, and we're just going to get the old Jesus pen and make sure that we are removing this material here. There we go. And next thing we've got to do now is get those marking gauge lines, and we have to square those across to the front. Now, obviously, with this, we are squaring them up to the marking gauge line we've got on the back here. It's a little bit hard for you to see. It's around there, so do not cut them beyond that because that is where our stopped groove is. So knife in the line here where the dovetail ended. Square on the back edge because that is where our face side edge. There you go. Where back like that. Cool. So there we go. We have got all of our material to remove there, and we're going to do the bulk of that with a saw, and then we've got a little bit of cleanup to do afterwards. So this bit here is obviously quite difficult to do because if this was a through housing joint, we would just be able to get our saw on the back edge and saw straight through. But because we want to keep this bit of material here, we're actually having to angle the saw back a little bit. Now, this is quite difficult for beginners because they're trying to work out if they need to tilt the saw to match this angle down here, but then it's throwing it off on top. Just remember that all this is, is you're getting it square along that line to start with. Next thing we need to do is tilt it back to stop it from hitting the edge here. And the next thing to do is we need to match the dovetail angle. That's all it is. There's nothing like this where you're having to angle the saw like that. So again, I'm just going to take a little nibble to start with. Now, I'm not going to take it down to that final line. I'm going to leave it about half a millimetre away or a millimetre or so. And just keep blowing away the dust as you go so then you can see if you're going past that line or not. So as I do this, I'm watching both lines here. Now at the front here, it is right on that marking gauge line. Don't worry if you go past that because the shoulder on this will hide that. The only issue is if you saw straight through the front. So don't worry too much if you go past the marking gauge line here. Just make sure you don't hit this front corner. There we go. So that is most of that done now. And now we can just get to work on removing most of that material. Obviously, it's only going to remove easily up to a point because the saw has gone in at an angle. If it was straight through, we could just whack it all the way through like we did on the cross halving joint. So get a chisel to match this width here. That one looks a tad too wide, so I'm going to move down a bit. And again, I'm looking at it along this length here so I can see if my chisel is tilting forwards or backwards. Do a bit of do just a little bit of Most of that's removed, and now we're starting to follow that saw line up, so it's getting difficult to remove. With chiselling down to this final baseline, if you haven't quite hit it with the saw, best thing to do is get your chisel in there and just roll it up a little bit so it hits that baseline. So on here, I'm about a millimetre off. Just roll that chisel up, and there we go. That's hit the baseline. And now, when I whack into it, it's not going to split along that entire length, or at least we hope so. There we go. So that first bit of material that broke off 
there. <laughs> That's gone right up to the corner. Okay, that looks good. Now we're just gonna get it on its front again like this and we're gonna pair backwards with it. So again, be careful at this point. Essentially all you're doing here is just removing material, so chop down, chop in from the front, chop down, chop in from the front, and just taking out corners at a time until we work our way back to this shoulder line here, and then we can get work on the final cleanup. So it's gonna take a while. I will see you on the other side. Okay, so now obviously all of the course work is done. We're pretty much there. Now we've got to do the medium cleanup where we're working our way down to those baselines and see where we're at after that. So like I say, this is what I call the medium cleanup. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use a router plane for this. Similar to the previous joints, you can do this with a chisel and just chisel out the bottom of that. If you have a depth gauge, that'd be great because then obviously you can run that along the top here. Find any high spots in the bottom here and remove them with a the chisel. The router plane is obviously a blade with a built-in depth stop anyway, so it doesn't matter. So on the front, I've got that lined up with my baseline. I'm just gonna drop it a little bit more. Cool, there we go, we're just gonna run that through. So at the back here, I'm getting a little bit of resistance, so I'm just gonna pop my chisel in there and get rid of that. What you wanna be careful here is do not push too hard because it's entirely possible just to smash out that back wall there, and thus obviously that's gonna destroy your components quite considerably. Right, I reckon the bottom of that is looking good. The next thing we've got to address is these dovetail angles here. Now there's two ways of doing this. The first one is having the material up on end like that and chiseling down here, following this line down the front, which will work. However, your chisel has the potential to sort of fall out of that line, then it's gonna be difficult to get back into it. But, you know, if you're careful, you have a really sharp tool, you can do that. The way I tend to do it, because I think I get a little bit more control and I can commit to smaller chops, is working with it flat like this and then simply getting the widest chisel I can find. And I've positioned myself again, so I'm looking down the line like this, pop the chisel in the knife line like that, elevate it until I match that dovetail angle, and then just tap it through. I'm gonna do this really carefully and make sure I'm following that dovetail the whole way down. Okay, so we've bottomed out. Now I'm gonna lock my hand in that position and simply just remove it up to the next line and then just keep tapping. Okay, so my hand is obviously moving a little bit at that point because it started slipping out of the dovetail, but that's okay. We're down to the shoulder line here. We will do that in our fine tuning at the very end where we'll pare away the little bits of material that we have left in order to achieve that fine fit. So just work down as best as you can to your marking gauge lines now and we'll final tune it at the end. Okay, so that is worked down to the knife line on the top here. Oh, I just took out a little corner of it. Luckily it's hidden. So yeah, like I say, that's all marked down to the line here. We've just got this little bit at the front here to make sure is square or we can undercut it if we want. I'm just gonna chisel it down and do it by eye. So we'll just get rid of all these fluffy bits for now, get it as close as we can, and then we'll pop the joint together and see where we're at. Chances are we're gonna have to fine tune this. Right, I think that's it. So let's get our dovetail and see where we are at. So we've got the face side on the front here, which means that our face side needs to go on like that. So dovetail in the back. Okay, it's sticking, which is good. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's around there that it's sticking. So what I'm gonna do is on here, just do a small pen mark, make sure it isn't going beyond the shoulder line on here. Just a pen mark there and a pen mark there. And then I know that when I take this apart, I've got my two little pen marks there and I can look in here and see whereabouts in that area it looks like I've got material wedging it. And I can already see something on this side where it looks like the pitch of the dovetail isn't quite steep enough. So let's get our chisel in there. Like I say, I've got the line there and that's exactly where it stopped. So, you know, like that. There you go, you see it pair out like that. And because the fit was so nice at the front here, it means that I can just sort of eyeball the rest of this and just make sure that there's no steps or anything. Get the fluffy bits out so you can get right into that corner. <sighs> okay, that looks good. And now we're just going to swap to the other side. Again, there's a small hump in there that I can see, which doesn't look nice. So just pair that out as well. Okay, right, let's try it again, shall we? Get in there like that. Okay, 
Oh, hello. I think it's going all the way. Well, look at that. Okay. It has bottomed out in there. And that being a dovetail joint, obviously, you can't pull it apart. So, as you see, nice and crisp all the way along there. Okay, and now on the back here, it looks like my router plane might have ever so slightly dropped a bit. Now, I'm not blaming the tools by any means. I know that I should have checked it, but this is one of the things you need to be cautious with the Veritas router plane about. Like I said in previous videos, something about it feels loose, and that is one of them. The blade can just sometimes drop like that, and I'm pretty sure it's because of this locking collar on it. Other than that, really great tool, but you just need to keep an eye on it. So anyway, <laughs> excuses aside, let's plane it flat and see what that does. Okay, so there are two things on this joint which bug me. Obviously, this bottom line here, I'm not too happy with. I feel like we could have got that crisper, but that was just because of the router plane dropping and I just didn't notice it happening. So that was operator error there. I should have checked that as I was going. But obviously, this bit here is another issue. Now, let's get in a little bit closer. So that there is the corner of the chisel. As I was going in to clean out that corner like this, the flat spots on the side of this Lee Nielsen here, that is what has caused that bruise in the corner there. Now, if you watch my tool duel video on chisels, this was one of the things I brought up. When you're pairing into dovetails like this, having chisels with wide flat spots on the sides like that can end up doing something like this if you're careful. The way to prevent it is to skew the blade as you put it in like that. With this, I obviously went in straight and as a result, the flat spot on the side has caused this bit here. So if an overview of that video, that was one of the problems with the Lee Nielsen's in that they had these flat spots and the cheaper ones as well. Whereas Veritas chisels, for example, have the tapers on this ground down to a complete point, meaning I could go right into that corner with the chisel straight and I wouldn't get this sort of bruising. So again, that was something that I could have prevented. That was just me hacking out material and not paying attention to what I was doing. It's nine o'clock at night now, so... Um, let me off a bit. And there we go. That is how you cut a dovetail housing joint. Now, I want to be completely transparent with you, obviously. If something doesn't go right in this video, I am going to show you what went wrong and how you can fix it. So in the case of here, like I say, router plane dropped. I wasn't paying enough attention to it. My mistake. I know the tool better than that. I should have checked it. And obviously that corner where I've bruised it with the chisel. Again, that was due to my carelessness. Um, you could quite easily avoid that. But other than that, the joint looks pretty good to be honest luckily that's the back so you'll never see that in theory but i'm just creating excuses for myself here <laughs> and obviously on the front here it's completely optional to make that a stopped joint you can have that dovetail all the way through if you want that to be a feature or not just make sure you take a little bit of time and care with it because again you don't want to have gaps like this showing on the front i can get away with it on the back because I'm a right old cowboy like that. But anyway, I hope that video was enlightening. Chuck comments below and I will see you in the next one.